Okay, so let's do some data acquisition using an Arduino Nano. And I've got a signal generator here, and it's set to 1 kilohertz, uh, 5 volts, peak to peak. And I'm using an offset of 2.5 volts. You can see it starts at 0, so all of my values are positive. So I'm going from 0 to 5 volts, and again, it's 1 kilohertz. And I've got my Nano connected via USB, and I'm going to upload a sketch, and we'll go... We'll go take a look at the sketch that we're going to use for this. And um, I'm basically feeding in the signal generator with this red and black, and then connecting the scope, and then running those onto the breadboard, and I'm going to tap off into the A0 and ground pins on the Nano. So it's going to be a fairly simple sketch, and all it does is it uh, reads the sample values from this sine wave into some arrays, and then prints them out to the um, control window. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, so let's take a look at a simple Arduino Nano sketch I've done and um, see how it works. It's fairly simple. Now what this does is it asks the user how many samples do I want to take of an input voltage signal, right? And I'm going to feed that signal into A0 pin and ground. All right, so very simple connections to the Arduino just between A0 and ground. And I've got a signal generator hooked up to that. So it basically says, okay, how many samples do you want to take of that signal? And you're going to enter the number and it will automatically sample the signal as fast as it can. And it will also provide a timestamp for each of those values and it will put it all in like a CSV format so you can then use that to uh, do some analysis. So let's first look at it in operation. Okay, so I'm going to run this and it's compiling, seems to have worked. And I'm going to take a look at the, the command window and I'm going to enter here the number of samples I want to take. So I'm going to hit 2-0, send, and it's going to think, and it's going to spit out 20 samples of that input waveform. And you can see it go increases and then decreases and increases. So it's got maybe two and a half cycles of that waveform. And it's also got this um, timestamp. And all this is is a indication of how many microseconds. Each value is the number of microseconds since the sketch started. And you can see, if you look at these, there is a difference of about 112 microseconds between each. Okay, so we're going to look at that later. We're going to put it into Excel and we're going to do some analysis. But Basically, as fast as it can go, it's going to do um, grab a sample every 112 microseconds. All right. So now let's clear that and see what we have here for the code. So the first thing I'm declaring my analog pin is A0, and that's an int. Don't ask me why A0 is an int, but it is. Welcome to uh, Arduino. Now, void setup. Uh, all I'm going to do is the standard serial begin, use 9600, use whatever you want. And then I'm setting the pin mode, so this analog pin A0 is an input. Now I'm going to collapse this. And by the way, I've got the um, preferences set up for code collapsing and also line numbers, just because I like line numbers. Uh, now the loop is going to be very simple. So I'm, I'm de um, defining an input string which is that number that I entered on the command line. Uh, the last time I did it, it was 20. So it's going to take that in as a string, and it's going to convert that to an integer called number of samples, num samples, all right? So I'm just defining the, the input string and the converted integer of number of samples. Now, I'm going to do an if loop. If the serial is available, okay, if that serial input is available, then I am defining my input string by serial.read string. So I'm reading the string from that command line, and that is my input string. All right. 
I am then converting that to an integer called number of samples. So input string dot two int gives you the number of samples. Okay, so I've just converted from a string to an integer. Um, you can also output what it read just you know, if you want to debug, but that's commented out. Now, I am setting up two arrays, and they have the same size, which is whatever the number of samples. What we did in the last was 20 samples, so it'd be two arrays, one called value, which is the sampled value, and one called time, which is the number of microseconds since the um, sketch ran or started running okay so i've got two arrays one for value one for time then what i'm doing is i'm doing the actual grabbing of the uh, values as fast as it can do it now i've tried to make this for loop as slim as possible all i'm doing is i'm grabbing um, the time which is micros function and each one for i equals zero to the number of samples, I am storing the microseconds since it first started into that uh, array value. And I'm also reading from that analog pin and putting it in the, in the corresponding val uh, position. So I'm not doing any conversions or anything else here, no serial stuff, because I want it to go as fast as it possibly can. So I'm just generating the two arrays. So in this case, it would have been 20 samples. I'd have 20 values of time and 20 values of the analog read. And then I'm doing it, once that's all done and the arrays are all filled, I'm going through and I am going to print the values out to the terminal in CSV format, all right? Um, so from zero to number of samples, I do three prints. Now, unfortunately, one of the things I don't like about um, this Arduino code is, you know, in C, in C sharp, you just concatenate these. So you could have the time, comma, value, but here you've got three print statements. So I've got a serial print, and it's not print line, it's just print, so there's no carriage return line feed. So it's gonna print the time, and then on the same line, it's gonna print a comma, and then on the same line, it's gonna pr print the value, and then it's gonna do a line feed. Okay, so that's why we get this. Let me run it again. And let's do 50. And send that. It'll think about it. And it's going to go, and there's your 50 values. Again, how many microseconds, comma, time. Now, what you can do with this, um, again, since the Nano doesn't have much storage on its... Um, on the board. Um, one thing you can do is just copy and paste this CSV into a notepad CSV file and then drag and drop it into Excel and you can do whatever you want with it. So what I can do is I can select the first and shift select the last, do a control C to copy it then I can run over to, for example, Notepad and do a paste and I can save that. And now I've got it saved in a CSV and I can just drag and drop that into Excel. So let's do that. Okay, so now I drag and drop that into Excel and it automatically saw the CSV format and formatted it. So what I can do is I can um, take a look at the difference between these timing values just so I can see um, how often the samples are. So I can say this minus this. Send it down. You can see it's 112 microseconds between um, samples, which is 0.1 milliseconds, right? And that's about what, what you see for the specs on this. The fastest it can go is about a, 100 microseconds for samples. So um, now what we can do is delete this, and I can make a quick um, chart by going into Insert, Chart, XY, 
Okay, and there you go. You've got um, the input data. Get rid of this. And there's our input sine wave. Okay, so I ran the sketch again, and I had my signal generator hooked up to pin A0 to ground. And um, I had a 1 kilohertz sine wave, and I gave it a 2.5 volt offset, so all the values were positive. So it went from 0 to 5 volts peak at uh, 1 kilohertz. And I got the results and made them into a CSV file, which I brought into Excel, and here is the results. And I kind of cleaned everything up so we can get an idea of what some of the numbers are. And um, just to give you an idea about the kind of stuff you can do uh, and the results you'll get, um, as you recall, the, the microseconds since the um, sketch gets started uh, came out of the um, array and here's the actual values, the raw microseconds. And then what I did is I converted those into milliseconds starting at zero. So I took this initial value, subtracted it out, and all of the values are now relative to a zero here. So my equation was multiply times 0 0.001, take the um, A2 minus um, the reference to A2 to zero this out, and I just copied that. So you can see now that instead of raw microseconds, I've got milliseconds starting from zero. And you can see it's increasing, and it goes up to a little over five and a half uh, milliseconds, okay? And here is the waveform I got. You can see it goes from zero up to five volts because I've got an offset at two and a half. And here are the raw sample values. And as you recall, uh, the, the analog read values are in a uh, range from 0 to 1023. And you can see the actual values go, I've got a 1023 here, and I've got a 1 here, and a 0 here. So you can see, um, they indeed, if I give it 5 volts, 0 to 5 volts, it gets 0 to 120, uh, 1023. So then I took those raw values and converted them to volts by taking the value, divide by 1023, and multiply the result times 5, and that gives you the, the actual volts. And you can see it goes, uh, here we are, 1023 is 5 volts, and 0 volts, and everything else. So that's kind of the, the what you can do with these numbers. It's kind of kludgy, but, um, you know, if you're going to have a, a small Arduino Uno, this kind of stuff you have to do, um, at least one of the options. You can probably do a bunch of other things. Um, now, I took a look at the, um, at the output, and I took these two numbers to see what the, how many milliseconds for one cycle. And as expected, it's a little over one millisecond per cycle if it's a one kilohertz waveform. And if you calculate the frequency from that, it's just under one kilohertz, so that makes sense. And with that, um, sample rate of 112 or so microseconds, the Nyquist uh, criteria says you can get almost up to 4.5 kilohertz um, of a, a frequency and, and uh, reproduce it uh, accurately. Anything, you know, so if you're getting up around 4 kilohertz and you've got really well-written code in that there's not a lot of other stuff, like, we, you know, we, in our loop, we really have nothing in the loop, so Hopefully, it's not taking any time doing stuff other than just a, a raw analog read. Um, and it's doing it as fast as it can. If you start adding more stuff in that loop, it might slow down the sample rate. So, but you can see when you get up around 4 kilohertz, you've got to be careful. Um, depending on your code, you might be, you know, 1, 2, 3, or 4 kilohertz. So you've got to be careful. Now, the other thing you need to be careful about is... Um, the memory on your, in this case, Arduino Uno. If you look down the bottom here, it says the sketch uses uh, just under 4 kilobytes, or 12% of the program storage space. Maximum is a little over 30 k bytes. All right? Now, the global variables use 200 bytes, which is 10% of dynamic memory, leaving only 1,848 bytes for local variables. The maximum is only 2,048 bytes. 
So again, if we do like um, 20 or 50 samples, you're probably okay. But if you do like, you know, 2,000 or 20,000 samples, you're probably going to run out of memory on your Arduino uh, Nano and it's going to crash. And here's an example with this sketch where I um, hard-coded array values of 2,000 samples for the values, the samples, and the time. So now we've got a total of 4,000 uh, big integers in these arrays, and you can see it crashed. It says um, global variables use 12,190 bytes, which is 600% of the limit. All right, so no way you're going to get 2,000 um, samples plus time values. Um, it's going to run out of uh, memory. So that's one of the, the issues you got to be careful of when you're using these small, inexpensive devices. Um, you got to be very careful about sample rate and how many samples total. Okay, so can you do data acquisition with an Arduino, a lowly Arduino Nano? Well, of course you can. Um, we just showed where you can do it, but there are some limitations. And, you know, the cheaper the, you get what you pay for. The cheaper the device, the, the bigger the limitations are. But you can do it. Now, um, the other end of the spectrum is um, a device that we've talked about in, this, in other videos in this playlist. I encourage you to take a look. And the particular one we looked at is called a Lab Jack. And that is a like a $200 device. And um, yeah, it's got some more capabilities. It's got, you know, you can put higher voltages into it. Uh, you can get more samples per second. Uh, you know, it's called a burst of data that you can't get here. It stores more data on it. But the other nice thing about something more professional like this is it's got a lot of built-in code libraries um, for like C or C Sharp or Linux or Python. And uh, you can basically very quickly develop uh, an application like we showed in, in other videos in this playlist where I put together this Windows Forms using C Sharp application. And in, under the hood here is some of the basic uh, code that comes with this U12 LabJack that makes it very easy to just grab data or to log data. Um, so... For example, I've got this, um, I just, I've got the lab jack hooked up to my USB port and all I have to do is press the button and it finds the lab jack. And then I say, okay, I want half a second of data at the maximum is 8,000 uh, samples per second. So let me hit acquire and it samples what's called a burst. Here you can see I've got half a second. And the value is going from 0 to 5 volts. I've got a, a signal generator feeding a sine wave from 0 to 5 volts with a 2.5 volt offset. And you're all set. Um, and then I've saved that to a CSV file. And what I can do is I can do a simple FFT using C Sharp libraries. And you can see this is a 500 hertz pure sine wave. And, you know, this is the kind of stuff you can do with a higher-end device. Now, you can do it with a, like a, a Nano or a Uno or a different device, but it just, you know, comes down to how much work you want to do. So what we're going to do in the next video is we are going to develop a very, very simplified version of this where we basically take the Nano and grab a burst of data, kind of like this, and process it so that we get these sample values and times. So then what you can do is you can put it into a chart like this in C Sharp and do the same thing. Again, you know, this has limitations. There's not much memory on it. Sample rate isn't as good, but you can do it if you need to. So anyway, I encourage you to look at some of the other videos on this playlist where we talk about data acquisition and using uh, different devices and generating C-sharp code. Anyway, uh, I encourage you to hang around for the next video where we um, write some code for this in C-sharp. Otherwise, take care and have a really good day. Thanks.